Hi, I'm David Farina. In today's lecture, we're going to be discussing Chapter 0, Charting the Heavens, specifically Part 4, The Measurement of Distance. Astronomers measure distance using a method called triangulation. Triangulation can be used also for general surveying techniques, and you can even try doing some of these in class, where we'll be measuring parallax or using the process of triangulation, the use of triangles, to help to understand what the height of an object is or the distance to an object is when you don't know all of the information using similar triangles. So for this example, we have a surveyor, and the surveyor wants to know what the distance is to a tree across a river. Rather than trying to forge the river, the surveyor can use the process of triangulation. So in order to do this, they have to create a right triangle. So they line themselves up directly across the river at point A. They observe the tree from this position, and then they measure a known distance, a baseline measurement, to a position which is represented here by point B. They take an angle measurement of point B to point A between these two positions and using the ability to measure with a right triangle the angles, we can determine what the distance of the different sides are using trigonometry. Parallax is a similar technique. Unlike triangulation, we, riding on the Earth, have less control over our position. We do have the ability, however, to wait between the two seasons, six months apart from each other, or from one position of Earth to the other side. So if we have a known baseline, like the width of the Earth, or like the distance from one side of Earth's orbit to the other, let's say from the month of December to the month of June, we can now have a known baseline to measure from. We can actually try something similar to this with our eyes. Find something in the room, maybe it's across the room like a clock or something up on the wall, and hold your arm out completely extended with your thumb sticking up. And the goal here is to cover up that object, just like I'm using my thumb here to cover up my head. And when you do this, I want you to cover up one eye. If you can just blink uh, your eye shut, that's fine. If you need to cover up the other eye, like I'm doing with my hand, that's also fine. Now cover up that object, and then switch eyes. Okay, so you're going to take your hand and you're going to move it to the other eye as you're holding your thumb up and you'll notice that something happens. I'll pause and wait for you to try. Okay, you should have noticed that your thumb appears to jump from one side of the object to covering it back up again and back and forth. This is similar to what an object in space would be doing compared to things very far away like stars. We can observe parallax in things like planets. However, it was not until more recently that we had the ability to measure parallax with stars. Um, you need very strong telescopes to be able to see the parallax caused by close stars versus very far away stars. And the position, the jump, has the ability to tell us what the distance to that object is so long as we know the baseline measurement that we're working with. And that's it for part four. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we have a very short part five coming up. Tune back in. Thanks.